safe in the knowledge that orchard spirits are appeased for another year. Well, what a lovely evening. And now, hopefully, if I go home and do some wassailing, I'll get lots of blossom and plenty of fruit. And ultimately, lots of cider. Willow harvested in Somerset has been favoured by hot air ballooners and basket makers throughout history, but it's also a hit with artists. Willow charcoal has dark pigment that's easy to erase, making it perfect for creating detailed images. And one person who prefers to use willow charcoal is Somerset artist Kate Lynch. She documents local people reviving the traditional crafts that were for centuries at the heart of Somerset's life and character. I've spent 23 years now drawing willow growers and basket makers and some of the people who are working and farming in Somerset. I found they had fantastic stories going back generations. It's the same willow that the basket makers use. This is one-year-old growth of willow that's cut and harvested and cooked and makes the most beautiful charcoal. It was meeting the people, the people that has shaped my art, really. One person Kate has documented is Diana Robertson, who for the past 24 years has made traditional bee skeps the baskets used to trap swarms of bees and move them to a permanent home. We're coming up to the apiary and I have a small bee bowl here. A bee bowl is where years ago the old country beekeepers kept their bees because they used to use straw skeps like this one and they built a, a bee bowl with a little alcove to keep the weather away from the bees. So this is a, a skep. Um, which sits nicely on a little base there. If you get a swarm, you take your skep and you can shake your, the swarm into the skep and then there you are with your bees in the skep and you can put them in the bee bowl. Traditionally, bees were kept in a willow or hazel basket called an alvury. With the arrival of the Anglo-Saxons, these were replaced by straw skeps. From the early 1900s, these began to be replaced by wooden modular hives, these are mainly used today as they make it easier to monitor bees and to take the honeycomb out on the tray. Skeps these days are mainly used for catching swarms before transferring them to a hive. For skep making, people years ago used to use just what was available, basically. First of all, you need to have the straw. It's wheat straw. And then the tools. Um, this is called the guide, and you need to keep it packed tight with the with the straws which have already been soaked because if they're too dry, they just crack. Uh, the guide is a, is a piece of cow horn. So th this is the needle, which is a turkey bone. You cut it off at a, at a good angle so that you get a reasonable point. And then when the tips come through, you can put your lapping cane into the groove and then I can pull the cane through. If you're making something traditional, it's lovely to use the traditional um, tools. Diana is one of about six professional skep makers left in the UK, and she uses her skills to pass on to others. Today, Kate has returned to sketch Diana as she keeps this traditional craft alive. Can you just put your hand up as, as if you were going to now make a channel? Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Up here? Yeah, that, yeah. that's nice. To sit with you, mm -hmm. watching you make the basket slowly and drawing you at the same time, that's been quite, quite well, special. special. I think when you're making something, that bit of your history mm. is in what you've made, I mm. think. Yeah. So, shall I, um, shall I show you what I've done? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> Here we go. Oh. 
<laughs> Absolutely there we are. fabulous. Really is <laughs> lovely. Well, Kate. I hope so. Your basket is um, commemorated. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Well, this year we are continuing to follow a group of young farmers learning on the job. Is there anything more quintessentially British than a picnic on a warm day? Now, of course, right now that feels a very long way off, but this lot is about to be transformed into next season's picnic baskets. Ooh, sunshine and sandwiches, eh? Can't come soon enough. The unique wetland environment of the Somerset Level stretches south from the Mendips to the Blackdown Hills and covers around 650 square kilometres. The land here has been managed and drained by people for thousands of years. This distinctive landscape is made up of grasslands for dairy farming, ancient apple orchards and it's the commercial heartland of willow growing in the UK. Now, willow likes to do things a bit differently to most plants. It actually grows very well in boggy soils, so these often flooded Somerset levels make a really good home for it. And unlike most plants, it's best harvested in winter. And so effective, you can see it stripping off. You can see that white underneath. Yes. And try my hand at the whipping. I'd have thought in a place like this, with all this furniture being made, they could have got you a chair. <laughs> Away from the willow harvest, sharp spirits in the hope of a good apple harvest. And do you believe that it works? Of course it does. Yeah? Why else is our cider so good? <laughs> Hard to imagine anything being harvested right now, but there is one crop you may not have thought of. The willow harvest is a seasonal farming event mainly found in Somerset. It is the primary region in the UK where willow is still commercially harvested, bringing supplies to the resistance in France. Today, cricket bats, furniture, and even lobster pots are also made from willow. And if they're made in the UK, it's highly likely they're made from Somerset willow. After today, there's just a few hundred acres. Cut willow continues to have many fascinating uses, from hot air balloon baskets, to picnic campers, artist charcoal, to eco coffins. What is its pliability? The stems are lightweight and flexible, so it can be bent easily by craftsmen. 